Hi everyone! In this video I'd like to take a look at hydroboration oxidation and how you'd predict the product for that particular reaction, in addition to taking a look at a few of the little aspects that are important for understanding your product. So if we take a look here, we're going to start out with an alkene. It's important to note that you can do hydroboration oxidation with an alkyne as well, that would be a triple bond, but the product that you get out of that will be different than the product that you're going to get out of this reaction with an alkene. So there are a couple things to notice about this structure. First off, we see that we have two generic R groups attached. So those are just two substituents. The R prime here is just to indicate that this group and this group are not going to be the same necessarily. And then over here on this carbon, though it's not written out, remember that there are two hydrogens implied in this particular type of structure. Now let's take a look at what's on this arrow. So we can see step one and step two. That means we're going to have two consecutive things happen in order to make this reaction go. The first step is we're going to do the hydroboration. So that's where we're adding a hydrogen and a boron across that double bond. The second step is going to be the oxidation, and that's where we're going to get the boron replaced with an OH group, and that's how we're forming our alcohol. So now something to note, BH3 in THF is what we're seeing here, so the THF is important because it's actually going to stabilize the BH3, um, which in solution is actually going to be forming a dimer. Now the thing that you want to notice is that we are saying BH3, but oftentimes you'll see something where the boron has much bulkier groups attached to it, something like 9BBN, and the reason for that is that's going to increase the amount of major product that you get out, so it pushes the reaction further and further towards producing the final product that you want. So now if we take a look at this product, there's something really interesting about it, and that's that this OH group for our major product is adding to the less substituted carbon position. Now the reason that this can be a little bit striking is oftentimes when we're talking about making an alcohol from an alkene, what we're looking at is an acid catalyzed addition of water. And when we're doing that, what we see is that the OH group always adds on to the more substituted position. So this one is unique from those. So if you have a situation where you need to make an alcohol on a less substituted carbon, then hydroboration oxidation may be a very good step that you want to take to make that happen. Another thing to notice is if you are worried about the stereochemistry of a reaction, you want to keep in mind that this particular reaction is syn addition. That means that the H and the OH groups are going to be adding on exactly the same side of your double bond. So those are some of the things you want to keep in mind when you're predicting product for hydroboration oxidation.